By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Ice Age Constructed Tournament Winters here. And we have arrived at the semi-final, so the top four. And this is going to be exciting. We have two decks with different colors but similar strategies. We've got a red and black deck called Lashrex Conquest. We saw this deck last week piloted by Baron Nick and it won its quarterfinal match and now it's here in the semifinals. This deck is all about land destruction and discard and, and burn, I have to say. And he is taking on a red and green deck called Mutant Squatter. This deck is played by Tom Atwood and he also has a big land destruction theme. He's playing with Stone Ring, Thermokarst and a full playset of Orcish Squatter. So this can be fun. And actually Baron Nick is also playing with Orcish Squatter. So this is just funny. A top four match in, in a 46 player tournament. And what do you find in the semifinals? Orcish Squatters. I mean, I love it. Absolutely love it. Another card I love in the list of Tom is Goblin Mutant. I'm really looking forward to see that card in action. Haven't seen it being played for ages. So I'm really hoping that it can find its way on the battlefield today. Now, before we start with the matches, I always have a deck deck, and I know that some of you wanna go straight to the action. Now, the easiest way to do that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games, Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. The nice thing is in the description below, you can also find all the ins and outs about this tournament. What cards were restricted, what cards were banned. You can also find a link to the tournament website where you can find deck photos. So if you're into Ice Age, check that description. There's a lot of interesting information there for you. Okay, this is all that I wanted to share in the introduction. That means we're ready to start with the deck decks and we are going to start with the deck of Baron Nick, Black and Red, Lashrox Conquest. And here we see the deck of Baron Nick. Now, we've already discussed this deck last week, so I'm going to keep it brief. The strategy, of course, is still the same. This is black and red land destructions. Uh, he's got Icequake, Stone Rain, Fumarole, Conquer, Orcish Quarters. All those cards have one goal, and that is to take lands away from the opponent. Once he makes sure that his opponent doesn't have any lands, he can start attacking the hand with Abyssal Spectre, with uh, that Mind Twist, Mind Warp, of Ice Age, so then he can force his opponent to lose all his or her cards, and then he can kind of build up the mana base so that it's strong enough so he can burn the opponent out using a Soul Burn or a Lava Burst. So in a nutshell, that's basically the strategy of Baron Nick, and it may sound very simple, perhaps it is quite simple, but I've got news for you. He made it into the top four, so this is definitely a strategy that works. We started this tournament with 46 players, now only four remain. And Baron Nick, he is one of them. Now let's go to the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Tom Atwood. So this is called Mutant Squatter. And it's named, of course, after Goblin Mutant and Orcish Squatter. So Orcish Squatter's the card that Baron Nick is playing with as well. One red and four to cast for a summon orcs creature. And when it attacks, you can choose to have it deal no damage. And then you can actually take over a land of the opponent. And uh, that's that is your land until the Orcish Quarters gets killed. So with one Orcish Quarters in theory, you can steal multiple lands. And I'm just really looking forward to that. Um, last week we saw Baron Nick actually steal one land with an Orcish Quarters. That was pretty, pretty spicy. Um, and then the other card that the deck is named after is Goblin Mutant. So again, a card that I'm really looking forward to see in action. It's uh, four mana, two red and two for a summon Goblin. It's a five three, so it's huge. It's got Trample as well. Uh, but it's got a little downside. It cannot attack if defending player controls an untapped creature with power greater than two, and it cannot block any creature with power greater than two. So um, yeah, I kind of love the flavor text here that says, if only it had three brains too. So it is a mutant of a goblin, but it still thinks that it's quite small. I kind of love that flavor aspect of this card. So goblin mutant is in this deck. Then we also see a heavy uh, land destruction theme, right? We've got thermocarst, we've got stone rains, so they're going to do a lot of work. We also have Icy Manipulators that can tap lands. Um, and then there's another card we have a full playset of, and that's this card, Centaur Archer. One green, one red, and one to cast for a 3-2 Summon Centaur, and you can tap it, and Centaur deals one damage to target creature with flying. It's a little bit underwhelming, you know, what it does, because you got to pay uh, three mana for it. Um, but then again, you've got three power for three mana. That's actually pretty good. So it's a 3-2. I mean, if he can, I guess the strategy here is turn one Findorn Elves, turn two Destroy a Land, 
turn three player centaur so you can put some pressure on destroy some more lancer your opponent cannot really play anything out and then you can start attacking with your centaur archer you can maybe get your goblin mutant a turn early on the battlefield as well and then you can deal some damage i mean goblin mutant is really good as long as your opponent doesn't have a creature with power two or greater um, so if you can kind of make sure that doesn't happen because for example your opponent doesn't have any any creatures then you're good right um and also goblin mutant says it's an untapped creature so those icy manipulators could be very important here for tom he can use those to tap the bigger creatures down allowing his goblin mutant to attack and he can also use the icy of course to keep lance tap down of his opponent and that of course goes great with that uh, a strategy of land destruction in his deck so I think this is a pretty strong, um, it's a pretty strong list and I'm looking forward to see it in action and hopefully Tom you get to cast some Goblin Mutants. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right into the semi-finals of Winters here, the Ice Age Constructed Tournament on Timmy Talks. Game number one, here we go, we've got Baronic on the left, it looks like he's taking a double mulligan here. Yeah, so two cards on the bottom there, that is a bad start. On the right we have Tom. Edward and he's on the player starting with a Findor and Elves. That is a really good opening for him. Remember, Tom is playing with Stone Rain and Thermocross, so he's probably going to do some land destruction now. If he can find a land that is there, we see the mountain. He's going to tap. There it is, a Thermocross taking care of that first uh, land there of Baronic. So he's going to drop to 19, by the way, playing out another Swamp. Unfortunately, we don't see his life total, so I'll keep track of lives. I wonder if Tom can find a second mountain and play a Goblin Mutant. Yes, Goblin Mutant. This is so cool. So a 5-3 with Trample, right? I mean, Nick, Baron Nick really needs an Incinerate right now. He needs a red mana and he needs an Incinerate or else he's going to take 5 damage. This game could be over very, very quickly. I'm just already happy that I get to see the Goblin Mutant in action. I haven't seen that card in action for ages. Attacking you for 6. So Baron Nick is going to drop to 13. There we see another Stone Rain. And this is the game that Tom wants to play. Make sure that Baron cannot do anything by destroying his lands and just keep attacking with the Goblin Mutant. This game could be over very, very quickly. There we see a Red Mountain. Are we going to see an Incinerate by Baron? He's passing turn. Remember, Incinerate is an instant. He can wait until the very last moment to do so. There's the attack with the Mutant. No, he doesn't have any removal. He's going to drop to eight. Another Goblin Mutant. Wow. This is insane. Are we going to see a Dark Banishing here, at least killing one of them? Nope, that's it. It's a Mutant Walkover by Tom Atwood winning this game. Dublin Goblin Mutants. Loving it. Um, this is only game number one, by the way. We're not at the end. We got two more games to go. Uh, this is going to be a joy to look at. Game number two, here we go. Let's hope for Baronic that he doesn't have to take a mulligan. It looks like he doesn't, keeping his hand and playing out a Zurin Orb in a Swamp here and passing turn to Tom. So Tom had that perfect opening last game, but he cannot find an Elves this time around. So that's good news for Baron, having some time playing his Mountain and passing turn. There we see a dual land, the Ice Age dual land. The red and green version by Tom. There's a Stone Rain and taking care of that Ice Age dual and passing turn here. I guess they're called pain lands because when you tap them you take a damage. And this is the forest one, makes red and green mana. So now basically we see uh, Baron Nick doing what he wants to do and what we saw Tom do in game one. That's kind of the first player playing land destruction. Look at this, Tom is discarding cards. This is not good if you play against land destruction. There's the Abyssal Spectre. So that can start attacking. That means that Tom will also lose cards as well. And that is really bad news for him. At least he's finding a force here. Hopefully he can do something. He cannot. There's the attack. He's going to lose another card. If, you're, if you look at Tom's deck, he really needs three mana to kind of make it work. Because then he can start casting his land removal spells. He does play with a few incinerates though. So if he can find some red mana, he can play an incinerate on the Abyssal Spectre. There is a Dark Ritual. There is a Necropotence. Okay, this it's pretty cool to see the Necro in play. So look at all the extra cards that Baron Nick here is drawing into his end step. So, I mean, this is a cat in the back for Baron Nick. We saw game one that was very one-sided for Tom Atwood. And now we're looking at game number two, which is very, very one-sided here for Baron Nick. I mean, there's no way that he can lose this 
with that Necropotence on board. And I mean, look at Tom. Things are only getting worse for him. He's got to discard to the, to the Abyssal Spectres. And he's just going to take tons and tons of damage. He's going to attack for four here. Tom is still on 16. Now he's going to drop to 12. He's going to lose two cards. And I mean, remember, with uh, Necropotence on board, Baron Nick can just draw a card just for paying one life. It's a ridiculously strong card. There we see Tom losing a lot. Tom kind of knows that this is lost already. There we see an Orcish Squatters as well. Just drawing two extra cards here for Baron Nick. And, um, you know, I, I think chances are close to zero for Tom to kind of turn this around. At least he needs to find another land here. So seven cards in hand, of course, for Baron Nick here. And there's a pass by Tom. So Tom's on 12. So he still has two turns to go before he's dead. There's an attack for six. So he's going to drop to six and he has to discard two cards. Now remember, with the Abyssal Spectre, at least you can choose yourself what you want to discard. But, I mean, it's not going to work. There's a Soul Burn, that's it. So, wow, 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 wow. Here we see Necropotence in full swing. But I think what was more important was that early Stone Rain by Baron Nick. And the, the fact that Tom just ran out of cards, you know, you need, especially against a land destruction deck, you need a lot of cards. I think I wouldn't keep a two land hand when I'm playing against land destruction. You know, I would just take a mulligan. You just need more lands than just two. Anyway, this is game two. So two very, very quick games. It's 1-1 right here in the semifinals. And we're now going to the third game to see who gets to advance to the finals of the tournament, the Ice Age Constructed Tournament Winters here. Let's go to game three. Game number three, here we go. Baron Nick, ooh, he's taking a mulligan, deciding not to keep it. So this is the old deciding game, right? Whoever wins this will advance to the finals, and we have the finals for you next week. And uh, this is exciting stuff. Look at that. Tom actually also deciding to take a mulligan. So he's going to shuffle as well. So both players are going to get a fresh hand, and then they have to put one card on the bottom of the library. We're doing London mulligan rules. And this is, uh, this is exciting stuff, you know. I mean, I, I kind of feel that if both, whoever player has their good start with that early land removal, that's probably going to be the player that's going to win it. I mean, I think it's that simple. We saw in, in, in game one where Tom really took off with the Goblin Mutants. That was like a dream start for him. And like smashing uh, Baron Nick's uh, deck here with two Goblin Mutants. And then we saw Baron Nick basically doing the same, finding that land destruction and necropotence combination in game number two. Look at that, Tom, taking another mulligan. This is really bad news for Tom. I mean, he's going to start this with five cards in hand, and he is on the play, which is then bad, right? Because you're not going to draw that extra card. So if you're Baron Nick here, you're very, very happy with this scenario. I mean, he's going to start with six. He's going to draw into card number seven, while his opponent, Tom, is only going to start with five cards, shuffling his library again, making those three piles again. And uh, man, this is really bad news for, for Tom Atwood here. He's going to find seven. I mean, he needs to at least find five really, really good cards. Remember, he is playing against land destruction. So like I said, after that game two, you want to make sure you've got a hand with enough lands. But if you only have five cards to choose from, it's going to be very tempting to kind of say, I'm going to put some lands away. Perhaps if I'm Tom, I would at least make sure that from those five cards, I would try to get at least three lands in there. Because you have to deal with Ice Quake, uh, you have to deal with Stone Rain, you have to deal with that Fumarole card. I mean, there's just so much land destruction coming from Baron Nick. And I guess Tom is really into tank here, trying to decide, does he want to keep? I guess the answer is yes, you don't want to go to four. But the question is more is, what two cards am I going to put on the bottom? So really being in the tank here, trying to make a decision. Okay, two cards here put on the bottom by Tom. I guess he's going to open a beer here, playing a basic forest and pass. Four cards in hand for Tom. Baron Nick playing a swamp and passing. No Findor and Elves here for Tom. Ooh, there's an Abyssal Spectre played out early with the help of that Dark Ritual. This is some pressure for Tom. Hopefully Tom can find a Mountain and an Incinerate. He's already down on cards. Duh, there we see Elk and Bottle. Not too bad, but not great. He needs to get rid of the Abyssal Spectre. He's only got three cards in hand. He's going to take two damage, or more importantly, he's going to lose another card. And he was already down on cards after that double mulligan. 
losing a forest here, putting it in the graveyard. This is just really tough when you're when you're Tom. I wonder what cards he kept. At least he can make red mana. And uh, it's interesting to look at, at Baron, by the way. He didn't play out a land, so he's kind of stuck on land. So I guess there is some chance here. There's a Goblin Mutant by Tom, who's going to drop to 16. There's a Stone Rain taking care of one of those pain lands. There's another attack. And Tom is losing a card here. But he can now attack with Goblin Mutant. So no cards in hand, but he's got Elkin Bottle and a Mutant. He's going to hit him for 5. He's going to drop to 15. And he's going to play a Mountain here. Then he's going to use Elkin Bottle. He's going to find an Orcish Squatters and pass turn. He cannot play it out, unfortunately for him. There is a Pump Knight and an attack. So he's going to drop to 12. Tom's on 12. And there we see the Orcish Squatters go because you have until your next upkeep to play out the card that's under the Elkin Bottle. There's an attack with the Goblin Mutant. And there are no blocks here, so that means that he's going to drop to 10. And there we see the Elkin Bottle activation, finding a forest. He can actually play that forest out. Interesting, choosing to play out a mountain instead. And there is the attack with the Abyssal Spectre, so he's going to drop to 10. Baron Nick is also on 10. And he's keeping the Pump Knight untapped because he can pump it to power 3, and that means that then Tom Atwood can no longer attack with his Goblin Mutant. So that makes absolute sense. So probably when Tom says, I want to declare attackers, Baronic is going to pump the knight in response. There's the centaur just missing one land. That's what I'm trying to say here. If he would have had one land extra. Okay, there we see Findor and Elves. I must say that Elkin Bottle is just doing a lot of work. There we see an attack by the Spectre again. Tom is dropping to 8. Baronic still on 10. If he can find a way to deal with that Pump Knight, I mean, he is playing with Incinerates. Tapping, finding another Goblin Mutant. That's kind of unfortunate because a lot of cards in his deck are actually casting cost 3 and he can produce 3. Oh, look at this. Finding another land, so that's another Goblin Mutant. If he can just get rid of that one Pump Knight, it is party time for Tom Atwood, but right now it is not. He's dropping to 6. It is looking bad for Tom here. Needs to find an answer to that single Abyssal Spectre that needs to go if he wants to uh, to go to the finals here. One card in hand. He can still activate Elkin Bottle. Dig a little bit deeper. What does he have? That is the big question. I believe he's playing two Incinerates. And an Incinerate deals three damage. It's really the card that you're looking for. So he's using the Elkin Bottle, finding a Thermocrast. He can use it to destroy the mountain. Exactly, that makes sense. At least it kind of cuts out the Lava Burst. But remember, Baron Nick also playing with Soul Burn. Doesn't have a lot of lands, by the way, this turn. So now he's pumping up the knight in response to Tom wanting to declare attackers. And because he then gets power 3 or bigger, he can no longer attack with the Goblin Mutants. Losing another Thermal Crest here to the Abyssal Spectre, dropping to 4. So he's got 2 turns left. He's on a 2 turn clock here. He needs to find something. Can he use Elkin Bottle again? There's a mountain. He can play it out. What's in his hand? That's a big question. He's got one card in hand. Tapping three, probably going to be some more land removal. There's a stone rain. I mean, if he can remove enough swamps, then, you know, Baron Nick can no longer pump the pump knight. But that strategy is simply too slow because Tom is already on three. He's now going to drop to one measly life. One ice quake can be enough. Baron Nick can finish it now on an ice quake on a snow covered land. I don't see any snow covered lands, by the way, on the side of, uh, of Tom. There's a centaur. Nope. That's not going to do it. I think this is game for Baron. Looks like Tom is still a little bit in the tank. Of course, he's got one card in hand. 
I don't think there's anything he can do. I mean, if, if he's got incinerate, he's fine. Tapping five for an orcish squatters. No, that's it. This is game. So let's see. He's going to attack here. Okay, he's got a soul burn even to finish off the game. So that is a win for Baronic. Baronic, congratulations. Your deck is going to the finals of Winters here. The Ice Age Constructed Tournament. And Tom, well done, my man. That game one was beautiful. That game one was beautiful. But after that, kind of went sour. Especially, I feel, in game number three where you had to take all those mulligans and then you just couldn't find what you were looking for and you got killed by that one Abyssal Spectre. Okay, this was the match for today. Congratulations again to Baronic for reaching the finals. And these are our two final decks. So we've got a blue and white deck, Zurn's Spirit, and it's got Zurn Spellcasters in there, piloted by Kundert, who's going to take on Baron Nick that you just saw winning against Tom Atwood. So he's gonna play in the finals with his black and red Lash Rex Conquest. So man, that is going to be a very interesting match. A blue-white control against a black-red land destruction deck. So yeah. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what direction that will go. Um, before you leave, I'd like to ask you one thing, please, or actually three things. Please like, comment, and share this video on your socials. All those things are free and really help the channel move forward. So it would be great if you could do that. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and ring that bell. Now there's one last thing that you can do as well, and that is becoming a sponsor of the show. And you can do that via Patreon. There's probably an info card popping up right now so you can Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can find out all about Timmy Talks Patreon. The cool thing is if you join the Patreon, you can also join these tournaments because I actually organize these as a thank you to the channel members and patrons. So if you like what you see and if you want to join, please consider joining the Timmy Talks Patreon program. Um, and the other thing you can do is, uh, or the other perk I should say when joining, is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. So let's take a look at our fantastic Wunderbar patrons and channel members. Let's go to the end scroll. Ich kann nicht